Thank you so much. Thank you all for the patience that the interview started, and thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here. It's an honor. Many of you sitting here tonight, you know my history more or less, but for those of you who don't, I would like to share some of my personal journey because that's what helped me to create Thinking of You. I grew up in a family of artists. My brother and my father are both artists. My earliest childhood memory are of my father, him sitting in the chair and working and reworking the canvas. He would sit there for hours. I would watch as he used a variety of households and uh, washcloths to the most random objects in the kitchen. As a child, I only had the slightest idea, a basic awareness of what I was, I was witnessing. My father was expressing in canvas his emotions, his uncertainties, his struggles, his worries, his political views, which he was forbidden to speak. I was witnessing the intimate language of art. My art practice centers on identity, history, and memory. I am very passionate about human rights in general, and especially about women issues and their role in society. I grew up in 1990s, Pristina, Kosovo, under the atrocious Milosevic regime. It was the time when Albanians in Kosovo were constantly being denied basic human rights. It was the time when Albanians experienced discrimination in employment, equal high housing, fair trails and education. I am an Albanian and therefore I was not spared. Uh, I was denied an education in my own language. Thankfully, we completed high school and university in sort of makeshift parallel education system. We created an underground school system in the homes of our professors and our peers, an alternative system allowing us to continue our studies. In those incredible, harsh times, I began to understand the priceless value of art as a unique language created by individual, yet understood by all. Art became for me what it was and is for my father and my brother. It is the way in which I best express myself. Art is my language of choice my voice that travels without me having to utter a word. Art has no barrier. It is universal. It is a way of expressing the unsaid or unsayable. A few years ago, I came across a very rare TV documentary, an interview about the survivors of sexual violence. I watched as the woman hiding behind the curtain in a home, in a hope of remaining anonymous, recounted her story of sexual violence. In the post-war period, the streets of Pristina were full of the stories of people's struggles, the stories of heroism, of the freedom fighters, the stories of massacres, horrifying stories which were told and retold. Yet, in all the years since the war ended, I had never once heard a woman share her story of being sexually violated. I watched the documentary, and I watched the woman hidden behind the curtain told her story of sexual brutality. And then I, li I listened as this woman went on to talk about how it just did not end there. She was not only sexually violated, but she was then stigmatized by the society that she lived and loved. She was viewed as a woman without an honor. She had to live with a feeling of shaming her family. I couldn't believe that on top of the reality of her horrific experience, she was forced to carry the guilt. She was carrying a lifelong burden without ever having committed a crime. I knew she was not alone. There were many and many that remained silent and in the dark. 
There were many women who were encouraged by their families not to speak about the sexual violence they experienced in the war. During the war in Kosovo, sexual violence was not a rare and isolated act. It was deliberately used by the enemy forces as an instrument to terrorize civilian population and to push people to flee their homes. I felt deep sadness for these women. They had experienced horrific, terrible violence and then being rejected by the societies. So as I was watching the documentary, I was wondering why are these women being treated this way? Why were they being silenced and stigmatized? And where were the institutions that were supposed to protect them and support them? After watching the document documentary, I knew that I needed to do something about it. And I knew I, I had a feeling that I had to push this woman to break this silence. I wanted to fight the stigma and I wanted to know that I am thinking of you. We are all thinking of them and they are not alone. I wanted to do something that would involve the whole, the whole society, the institution, the government. I wanted the woman to feel the solidarity of nation coming together to help and to give. Uh, something that left a mark on my childhood, as I said before, my art practice centers on identity, memory, and history. Something that left a mark on my childhood is that with my parents, I participated in a massive event of reconciliation of the blood feuds during the early 1990s. That was the first time that I witnessed the sense of solidarity when the whole nation came together, when people from all walks of life, rich, poor, rural, urban, men and women forgave the old disputes and then moved forward. I would never forget that moment. I wanted this woman to feel exactly the same solidarity, the giving, the understanding of pain, the recognition of it, and then moving forward. Thinking of you is dedicated to the Kosovo survivors of sexual violence during the war. But at the same time, it is dedicated to the whole, to the whole, sexual, to the whole um, sexual violence all over the world. It has its roots in Kosovo, but at the same time, it has a universal language of its own. And it can be understood and felt by everyone. Sexual violence continues to be used as instrument of war and its victims remain unrecognized and silenced globally. So in creating uh, the art installation, Thinking of You, I wanted to make a direct call to break the silence, to fight the stigma, a call to act and show solidarity. I called on men and women to donate a skirt or a dress to recognize the survivors. I wanted to create a piece that there is showed that there is no shame and no stigma. I wanted to break the silence. I wanted to bring this issue into the man's world, to a public place. I decided to take this hidden private issue that no one wanted to talk about and, bring, and place it in the main area in football uh, stadium in Pristina. I decided to create a piece where thousands of skirts and dresses were hung on the washing lines across the stadium, and no longer would it be a voice behind the curtain. Across Kosovo, men and women, young and old, came forward to donate a skirt to join this activist art installation. And by making everyone part of it, part of this installation by the very act of going in each city and talking to the survivors and talking and collecting the skirts and talking, the peace took on of its life on its own journey. It became a journey of listening to the stories from all over Kosovo. It became a place where women shared their stories and their concerns. It was very, very emotional, deep learning experience for me and for all who helped and participated. The art installation brought us together, 
to remember the pain and to honor the survivors. We had come together to assure them that they did nothing wrong, to tell them that we are thinking of you and together we will break the silence and stigma. For many of the survivors participating, giving the skirts and hanging them themselves, it was a calming act of letting go and moving forward. One survivor I spoke on the day of the installation sent me a text and it read, we cried tears of joy that someone understands our concern and that people have come in such a massive numbers to support us. There were many texts and phone calls. Another woman who donated a red dress told me that she had saved this dress and she couldn't let it go until this day and has encouraged. It was an immense, immense honor to help these women in the act of letting go and moving on. The women I met during the journey of thinking of you were all strong women, survivors who had suffered a lot and who deserved the recognition and the support of the community, institution, and government. I can only hope that the art installation, Thinking of You, has encouraged our society to begin to break the silence. For all the silence surrounding this issue, there were many women activists and, uh, who kept fighting even when no one wanted to listen. And I thank all the volunteers, everyone who contributed, because they were an inspirational and enormous help on this journey. Thinking of you is a story of survivors, strength, and solidarity. As a mother, telling a story is part of my daily life. So I want to end up telling you a story about the starfish story. I don't know how many of you know the starfish story of making a difference. An old man was walking on the beach one morning after a big storm. And the storm had washed up thousands and thousands of starfish into the shore. He sees a little girl in the distance and tossing starfishes back into the ocean. And people watch amused. The girl picks one up and tosses into the ocean, and then another, and then another. The old man says, little girl, what are you doing? You can't save them all. It's impossible to make a difference. There are thousands and thousands of starfishes in the shore, so there is no way you can put them all back into the water. Returning another one back to the water, she says with a smile, it made a difference to that one, and to this one, and to the other one. So then all the people came together, they joined in, and they started tossing the starfishes into the ocean. We can all make a difference and help create a positive change, especially when we tackling and addressing massive social problems, especially on this case of sexual violence. I hope thinking of you gives survivors the strength and the support to move forward and to speak up. And I hope it will encourage all of us to speak up, because for together, we really can make a real difference. Thank you.